Well, good afternoon. Welcome to another conversation at the table, and this is take two. Apparently, my internet dropped here, and that's been happening all too frequently here at the house, and we're in the process of fixing that. So, I have no, I have no clue as to how long this is going to last. And some of you are thinking, "Gosh, I hope it's over in just about two minutes." <laughs> and that's okay. That's all right. So how have you been spending your time here, day 11 of our shelter in place? How are the kids? You ready to send the kids packing? <laughs> oh, and we're all dealing with this a little differently and certainly for many of us the novelty has worn off. I think in talking to people around here, it, it's all setting in, I think. This week was, was they're facing the reality of shelter in place, what it means, and what it's going to mean for at least another couple weeks or so, uh, if not longer. So again, we're all in this together. Uh, be encouraged. Uh, you're not alone. Reach out to somebody. If you start to feel like the, the walls are coming in, reach out to somebody, have a conversation with them, and if anything, start asking them how they are doing, because that's how uh, that's how Jesus helps us uh, through these things is in our community some of you are probably working from home I wonder how that's working out for you it's always uh, in talking talking with people this week uh, are you getting more done or less done uh, sometimes if you're in an office with lots of people you may be getting more done because you're at home uh, less distraction uh, fewer meetings fewer of those fewer of those live uh, impromptu meetings certainly but working from home has its own challenges right so how are you doing I hope you're doing great regardless of how you're spending your time I encourage you uh, along with the uh, other city pastors here and the city officials stay home <laughs> we've heard that loud and clear a couple of times this week here in the RGV and the best way we can love each other and the best way we can love our neighbor is to stay in place and reach out via the telephone reach out with your text messaging and your Facebook reach out those ways but stay home this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday and uh, this Sunday we will all be at home with our families and it will be a different kind of Holy Week coming up from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday it's gonna be a little different this year uh, more time to reflect probably for all of us more time to reflect on just how much Jesus has done for us in his life his death and his resurrection well Sunday in thinking about Palm Sunday we are going to be looking at the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and there are at least five Old Testament passages that are feeding into John 12 which is what we're going to be looking at on Sunday the story of Jesus ride into Jerusalem on a donkey and the entire Old Testament all of the Old Testament anticipates uh, Jesus life his death his resurrection uh, lots of, the whole Old Testament it has lots of anticipation every passage is pregnant with something that is looking forward to Jesus whether it's his work whether it's his life whether it's his death whether it's his resurrection well, one of the events in Jesus' life that we tend to uh, m not necessarily miss, but uh, it's not one of those stories, if you were to pick the top five stories that knew, you know of Jesus, would you pick his ride into Jerusalem? The idea that there are f at least five and, and, and probably many other passages that are feeding into the story of Jesus' ride into Jerusalem tells us that's a pretty significant event. And so we're going to look at that Sunday. We're going to look at that right now, actually. We're going to look part of it right now. Um, there, uh, of the five passages, uh, John has uh, a psalm. John has Zechariah 9, and John has Zephaniah 3. And we're going to save Zephaniah 3 for Sunday. So I thought today, just briefly, just briefly, we're going to look at Zechariah 9. And what does it mean for us who are sheltering in place? What does it mean for us? We're not, and again, not just sheltering in place, but again, the sheltering in place comes with its own uh, obstacles, its own challenges, and certainly uh, a, a, a bit of fear, especially for those who are still 
working outside the home and coming home every day and having to, to wash and having to clean and having to scrub and all the different things now that are part of our lives, especially those who still have people working outside of the home. So we're going to look at Zechariah 9. Zechariah is a prophet who is in Israel and in Jerusalem after the, the Israelites come back from Babylon. Uh, remember, Israel was in the promised land. Israel disobeyed. And God said, God put up with them for four or five hundred years. But finally, He said, "I've had enough." They get uh, the the northern tribes, ten northern tribes, get carted off to Assyria, and then about 150 years later or so, the southern tribes, uh, basically Jerusalem, uh, they are then ransacked by the Babylonians. Jerusalem is destroyed. Temples destroyed. And 70 years later, as God promised, there are, some of the Israelites are allowed to back. Most Israelites didn't go back, but some did. And life for those who came back was not the life they had left when they went to Babylon in the first place. Jerusalem is completely different. For one thing, it's no longer theirs. It is occupied, um, and it's owned by somebody else. But the other thing, too, is they rebuild the city. They rebuild the temple, but the city isn't like it was, and the temple isn't like it was. And so Zechariah is talking to a bunch of people who are like, eh, we thought, you know, we were hoping for a return to glory. We were hoping for a return to David and Solomon's days. And Zechariah's, uh, God is telling, talking to the people through Zechariah, and he says, that's probably, that's not going to happen here. But what he does have is hope. He's got hope for the people in Israel. So he calls them to repentance and then he gives them a series of visions and in these visions is hope. And among those, among the things that he's giving them hope is Zechariah 9. Um, Zechariah 9 again is part of this message that he gives them about what is coming. You know, they were hoping that they would have a king come back and Zechariah, again, is not, nah, not going to have a king now. But there is a king coming. So this is what Zechariah, Zechariah says in Zechariah 9. And it feeds into uh, our story on Sunday. Zechariah 9, 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout in triumph, daughter. So, Zechariah 9 anticipating the arrival of a king sometime in the future Israel's king is going to come on a donkey which isn't all that surprising the donkeys and kings in Israel go way back back to the time of David and Solomon and this king is going to come riding on a donkey and this king is a warrior king and he's going to come and save Israel from her enemies in one big salvation event and here's how Zechariah 9 ends the Lord their God will save them on that day as the flock of his people, for they are like jewels in a crown, sparkling over his land. How lovely and beautiful. Grain will make the young men flourish, and new wine, the young women. So the king of the donkey is coming to save his people. They are like jewels in a crown. And he will feed them grain and wine. He will feed them grain and wine. I wonder what that sounds like. Not too hard to figure out that promise here. So you need some good news today? Know this. As we ponder the king who's coming riding on a donkey, he's coming to save you. He's coming to save me. Save you. Save me from our sin. Save me from my self-righteousness. Save us from our narcissism. Save us from our unbelief. Save us from our failure to trust him. So when the world is falling down, and certainly for some of us this week, that's what it feels like. When the world is falling down, down, here comes your king, riding on a donkey to save you and feed you his grain, feed you his wine in his body and in his blood. He comes bringing forgiveness. He comes bringing himself to you and for you, for you right now. So in the midst of a week of bad news, that's good news. In the midst of all of this, there's a king on a donkey who loves you and he's come riding in to die for you because he loves you he loves you he loves you he loves you again and again he's going to tell you that he's going to show you that this week even today that'll be his grace to you 
You can't trust the news. You can't trust your neighbor. You can't trust me. Fine. Trust that guy. Trust the guy riding in on a donkey. You can trust him. He has you right now. That's our conversation at the table for today. Now join us Sunday right here, right here on this Facebook page. Sunday, 1030, we'll have our online service. And check out our other videos here. Tell us what you think. And like I said, reach out to somebody you know. Check in on them. Uh, they need community. You need community. And stay, you know, stay social at a distance. <laughs> we are loved by Jesus for the love of Los Fresnos. Thanks for spending your time with us this afternoon. You have a good day now.